Good morning to everyone. Uh, before I begin, let me greet our um, officials, dignitaries, and organizers for this morning. Let me greet um, first and foremost Dr. Mahale Rabago, ma'am. And uh, earlier, Professor Maha and I were talking about uh, the future of EPDP. And I would like to take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, Professor Maha for being a partner of the Committee on Energy. Um, definitely. Uh, we would need a lot of heads to help us in terms of uh, crafting legislation to uh, improve the uh, uh, energy sector here in the Philippines. In fact, this is also one of the things that I learned uh, from going around the different parts of the world, that the government needs an independent think tank to be its sparring partner when it comes to um, finding ideas and finding uh, uh, solutions. and. Uh, I think one of the best uh, examples that I've uh, uh, I've saw was when I went to Germany, and uh, almost all universities in Germany have their independent think tank. That is, that has become the sparring partner of the German government when it comes to uh, uh, legislation and programs. So we uh, plan, Professor Ma and I, and I plan to uh, emulate that type of. Uh, set up maybe here in the Philippines and uh, hopefully uh, uh, we, if, if our legislation, proposed legislation to create a energy policy institute will come to life, um, EPDV will become an institutional think tank here in the Philippines. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, let me also greet Yusek Jesus Posadas of the Department of Energy. Let me also greet Commissioner uh, um, uh, Amvik Yaptaruk, ma'am. Let me also greet former DOE uh, Secretary, uh, Zenaida Monsada. Let me also greet some uh, stakeholders who are here with us uh, this morning. Uh, Mr. Oscar Reyes of uh, Meralco, sir. Morning, Pop. And uh, I think earlier, um, uh, some of our international speakers were mentioned. Uh, good morning to all of you and welcome to the Philippines. It's good to catch the Philippines without uh, work in government and in classes or else you probably experience two, three times the amount of time that you need to pass through traffic. Uh, let me also greet, of course, World Bank, BCC, and uh, the other multilateral institutions who are here with us uh, this morning. The enactment of Republic Act 9136, or the APIRA, fostered the entry of a new regime in the Philippine power industry. The days of monopolistic government control gave way to a competitive private sector market driven with the ultimate goal of giving the consumers the power of choice through the implementation of full retail competition. Recognizing the birthing pains of transitioning out of a vertically integrated industry, IPIRA provided safeguards to prevent market abuse and the creation of oligopolies through the following. First, Market share limitations prohibit generation companies from owning more than 30% of the installed capacity of a grid and more than 25% of the installed capacity of the national grid. Second, a cross-ownership provision prevents generation companies and distribution utilities from exercising control or influence over the transmission concessionaire and vice versa. Third, distribution utilities are precluded from contracting more than 50% of their demand from related parties. Fourth and the last, IPIRA lays down a catch-all provision proscribing market power abuse and anti-competitive behavior. This is further elucidated by the enactment of Republic Act Number 10667 or the Philippine Competition Act, which specifies kinds of anti-competitive agreements and situations of abuse of dominant position. Yet, a perusal of the existing electricity industry shows the presence of dominant players and high retail rates. Almost 60% of the installed energy capacity is controlled by only three firms. There, are, there exists no formal monitoring of associated party contracting between generation companies and distribution utilities. The further expansion of the contestable market is at a standstill because of lawsuits pending before the Supreme Court 
with 44% of the total demand of qualified contestable customers still being supplied by distribution utilities. Even attempts at a streamlined competitive selection process has brought rot with significant opposition. This is no surprise that the herfindahl hirschman Index is approximately at 1176, suggesting that the market, that the power industry is on the verge of becoming highly concentrated market, one that is controlled by a handful of firms. Admittedly, the all-encompassing effect of PIRA remains to be seen because, because it has not yet been fully implemented. Nevertheless, the Senate Committee on Energy recognizes gaps and limitations that can be addressed through legislation and oversight to attain a PIRA's objective of competition leading to reliable, secure, and affordable supply of electricity. First, on the list of reforms, there has to be a clear delineation of powers between Energy Regulatory Commission, or ERC, and the Philippine Competition Commission, or PCC. I think both of them are here with us right now. The IPIRA gives ERC the power to enforce safeguards and promulgate rules and regulations to ensure the promotion, the, and to ensure and promote competition, encourage market development, and customer choice to discourage or penalize abuse of market power, cartelization, and any anti-competitive or discriminative behavior. While the Philippine Competition Act gives PCC the power to enforce and regulate all competition-related issues. Given these two regulatory bodies with seemingly overlapping mandates, stakeholders are in a quandary as to which agency to approach when it comes to competition matters in the energy sector. As such, ERC and PCC must come together to clarify matters of jurisdiction, which will, in the future, prevent inconsistency in rulings. Second, with regards to IPIRA, the metric used to determine market share limitation would be, should be reviewed. The law specified installed generating capacity as the measure in computing market shares. However, this is not reflective of the true market power of a company since installed capacity is different from the power generated and injected into the grid. To illustrate, the share of coal in the country's total installed capacity is approximately 35%, but its share in actual generation is 48%. For natural gas, its installed capacity is only 16%, but its actual generation is 22%. As a consequence, the use of installed generating capacity underestimates the true market share of a company, especially if its plants have comparatively higher capacity factors. Another imperfect restriction in the IPIRA is across ownership provision. There is a necessity to expand it to three more group of players, generation companies and Letter A, generation companies and distribution utilities. Letter B, upstream producers and the transmission concessionaire. And letter C, upstream producers and the distribution utilities. Um, we included the study of upstream because when we visited one of the geothermal power plants, the Makban power plant in Laguna, uh, we discovered that the ownership of the steam is connected to the system operator, which is the concessionaire of Transco. And the system operator should be impartial at all times because it dictates the dispatch. It also creates rules uh, for uh, the dispatch. And it should not have any uh, control over which type of uh, generation company uh, should be dispatched uh, at any given time. However, since IPIRA did not cover the steam or the feedstock that powers the power plant, it indirectly, uh, has, it indirectly uh, is associated with the generation companies. So one of the proposals is to include uh, the upstream or the feedstock to prevent uh, unwarranted, um, uh, unwarranted favoritism in terms of uh, the system operator. Senate Bill number 156 expands IPIRA cross-ownership provision to include generation companies 
and distribution utilities to avoid sweetheart deals, especially in light of the lack of an institutionalized competitive selection process and a lenient implementation of the associated party contracting limitation. This bill, filed by Senator Hercito, is currently pending before the committee and will be heard before the year ends. New measures will also be filed to tackle cross-ownership between upstream producers and the transmission concessionaire and upstream producers and the distribution utilities. This is to prevent a situation where the transmission concessionaire or the distribution utility favors a generation company that buys its energy resource such as steam, coal, or oil. When it comes to other unimplemented provisions of the IPRA, the Joint Congressional Power Commission or the JCPC will continue to monitor its execution, especially when it comes to retail competition and open access or the ARCOA. The, GPC, the JCPC aims to issue an official position on the implementation of Section 31 in light of the existing uncertitude that gave way to the pending cases. Third and last, further measures to be introduced to improve competition by allowing the entry of new generators, whether it be companies, households, or communities. Senate Bill Number 1439 or the Energy Virtual One-Stop Shop Act of 2017, currently on second reading, facilitates the entry of new players by removing red tape in the permitting process of generation plants. Senate Bill Number 1308, or the Electricity Procurement Act, uh, also commonly known as the Competitive Selection Process, presently undergoing committee hearings, levels the playing field both for new and old generators by, furnish, by furnishing a neutral platform to bid for uncontracted demand of distribution utilities. For the non-traditional generators, such as household and communities, three bills will be filed. A bill on the right to own, use, or self-generation, which will give individuals, both in the captive and contestable market, the right to generate and consume electricity using energy system they own or lease. A bill promoting microgrids, which will give areas not being served by distribution utilities, but under its franchise, the right to put up a microgrid system solely for electrification and not as a business operation. And this actually brings me to the situation in Palawan, wherein it will take, it will cost about two to three billion pesos to connect the entire Palawan Island uh, in the main grid. But the 2 billion or 3 billion pesos will have to traverse, I think, approximately 300 kilometers to connect small areas or small municipalities in the north. And uh, if you run the economics of it, it will not uh, be economical just to connect a few towns, and few towns and barangays to the main grid. And this is where technology should come in. So one of the things that we plan to uh, promote through legislation is the use of microgrids. And microgrids will also improve competition in the distribution level in unserved and underserved areas. And let us see a bill encouraging the use of embedded generation for distribution utilities as an exception to the limitation on related party contracting. It is the Senate Committee on Energy's hope that all these measures will enhance competition in the energy industry and ultimately lead to savings for the Filipino family. Once again, thank you very much for the invitation and uh, mabuhay po ang EPDP. Thank you.